Assalamu alaikum guys and welcome to the best video you're gonna see the whole day Yes, it might be because of the content of the video, but also because <laughs> You know <laughs> Yeah, I clicked on this video by accident. That's not very nice, is it? Quite a few people have made a video on this topic, but because it's such a worthy topic to be spoken about, to be spread, I thought, you know what, let me give a slightly different angle to the current stories that are out there. And it is, of course, of our sister. Halima Aben, and I'm a black Muslim Somali American from Kenya and the first hijab wearing woman in many places like the Miss Minnesota USA beauty pageant, the runways of Milan and New York Fashion Weeks, and even on the historic cover of British Vogue. She has modeled for the likes of Nike, Vogue, Kanye West, Rihanna. And in my first year, I graced the covers of nine fashion magazines. And all of this she has given up for the sake of our Lord. Mashallah, brother! She's given up the fashion industry. An industry, and let's be frank, yeah, it preys on the insecurities and self-esteem of the masses by exploiting and objectifying its own. And these aren't just my words, yeah. In fact, Giorgio Armani uses even stronger words than this. And it does this with immodesty and unrealistic standards of beauty. It festers narcissism, desperation, and eventual depression as we tend to get older. But yet this is still something that gets pushed by our societies, no matter what country you're from, because beauty and fashion is a multi-billion dollar industry and it relies on convincing you guys that you're ugly and inadequate. Look at me, look at that. Halima's choice was made even more special because she was a refugee, yeah? She was in a refugee camp before she moved to the US. And on top of that, beauty has a lifestyle and psychological impact on people as well. It's not something that can be stopped, yeah, at the drop of a hat. Did you ever think that maybe there's more to life than being really, really, really ridiculously good looking? In the book, The Survival of the Prettiest and the Aesthetic Brain, they detail a number of studies that actually show the advantages that some people who are good looking have over others. Parents, yeah, they're more softer towards the child that is the better looking. There was a study done which concluded that if a better looking person was to lose their money, they're more likely to get it back. And statistically they said that a better looking person is likely to get a better job and a better salary. They also talked about the downside which is entitlement. Yeah, thinking that you are owed something. So there was a study that was done where good looking people and not so good looking people are waiting for a job interview. Deliberately, the people would call them late. And they noticed that people that are good looking, they ended up only waiting an average of 3.3 minutes before going up and asking for attention, as opposed to the others who would wait up to nine minutes. I can sit here and give you a spiel about how what she's done is amazing and that sort of stuff but bottom line guys is this dunya is not made for us and the truly successful are those that can give up these haram things and inappropriate things for the sake of Allah yeah for the sake of the hereafter. After all the Prophet peace be upon him said Ad -dunya sijnul mu'min wa jannatul kafir. that this world is a prison for the believer and a paradise for the disbeliever. Because if you give up things for the sake of Allah, Allah will surely replace them with something better. And it might not be something that's as grand on a big scale, but you get something and that's inner contentment. Are you a rich man? What do you mean rich? What do you mean? You have a lot of possessions, a lot of money in the bank. Position make you rich? I don't, I don't have that type of richness. My richness is life. You have people on these big, big stages, mega performances, but all of them have one trend and that is genuine unhappiness. Yeah, genuine unhappiness. I really feel for our sisters because even in terms of role models, there's very few. Uh, the hijabi industry gets exploited a great deal. And uh, I'd say a lot of talented sisters, mashallah, just keep to themselves. And they find it very difficult to come onto these platforms. And Alhamdulillah, 
I just wanted to commend Halima Adin and other sisters like her as well. Let's leave it there guys until next time. Yeah, I wanted to say one more thing. If you're a parent or a teacher and you have good looking children, maybe from a small age, treat them not based upon their looks, but rather based upon their actions and their merits and get them used to hard work so they don't feel entitled when they grow up and then they struggle in the long run. Assalamu alaikum.